So, this is um, my Pentax lens collection, along with the cameras that I have. <laughs> um, there's a few off camera, and you can't really see the ones behind, but I'm, I'm gonna go through them all now. Um, and give the reasons why I ended up buying them, whether they were good reasons or not. <laughs> I've probably bought too many, let's be fair, but um, yeah, I, there was a purpose behind most of them. So I'll start with the K70, which has the 55 to 300 PLM lens on. Um, this was the original camera, the Pentax that I bought. If you've uh, watched that Pentax, why I bought Pentax video, then that'll give me reasons for choosing this camera. It was the first camera that I bought. But this lens, um, it literally lives on this um, body, on the K70, because I find that I think it's a, a newer image processing unit in the K70 and it seems to work really well with the 55 to 300 for moving subjects um, and the autofocus for Pentax doesn't seem to be too bad on it. Um, so that basically stays on the K70, that lens. Um, and I got that second hand, the 55 to 300 lens. And you'll never guess how much I got it for. <laughs> £150, so that wasn't too bad. Um, the K70 came with the DA50 for £499 in the sale, so that wasn't too bad either. Next up, um, I've got this K3, Pentax K3, and that has the 50 to 135 a star lens on it. Um, that lens doesn't really stay on this body. I, I, I'm in the process of like switching around um, to see what lenses work well with this body or how I, how I find them to work anyway. But um, it's on there at the moment. It's like awesome for portraits and stuff like that. It's super slow to focus, especially compared to something like the 55 to 300 PLM. But um, the color rendition and the image quality on it is like, I, I would say it's the best out of all the lenses that I have, to be honest. It's just a shame that it's so slow to focus, in my opinion. Yeah, if it was a fast focusing lens, I think I could get rid of a lot of the other lenses. Um, because that would be perfect since it's um, weather sealed and it's, it doesn't extend, it's, it's all internal focus and stuff so it, it really would be my uh, go-to lens of choice if the autofocus was a bit better faster on it. And the K3, mm -hmm. um, I bought this in the second lockdown, the UK lockdown of 2020. Um, unbeknown to me partner who has since found out and she wasn't best pleased to say that much <laughs> but um, I, I got that camera obviously second hand um, it, it was 8,500 or 9,000 on the shutter and I got that for £260 and that came in it, its original box with all the original CD and all the manual and all that type of stuff and it, it came with an 8 to 55 kit lens so for 260 quid, um, I couldn't really say no, could I? And I wanted to, um, as I've said in a few of my other videos, I wanted to test the K3 against the K70 in terms of autofocus points and all that type of stuff. Um, and I pretty much come to the conclusion that I think that, in my opinion, from what I've found so far, the K70 seems to be better. And that must be down to the new image processor because it's only got nine. Um, cross type focusing points whereas the K3 it's 27 or something like that but yeah I'm not the most technical I just go off how I find the um, perform when I'm out in the field so yeah that's the uh, K3 and the D star 50 to 135 I'm uh, running out of space a little bit here to uh, start and put stuff so if you 
So you start to place the cameras down. That's why. And here's a Pentax K5. And I got this in the first UK lockdown. <laughs> Too much time on my hands on eBay. <laughs> well, this wasn't actually on eBay, it was on fa Facebook Marketplace. And it was from um, a guy who was pretty local to us. And I think this is probably the the best bargain out of the, all the cameras that I got because of what it came with. Um, so the camera, the K5, it came with this 17 to 70 Sigma DC lens. It came with a 50 mil Sigma 1.4 lens. And they all like in pristine condition, like more or less brand new to be honest. The K5 itself had 900 and something shutter count, so it was basically brand new. It's got, from new it's had all of the, um, the uh, covers put on. It's got the cover on the, the screen as well, the screen protector. Um, but yeah, I got that for, <laughs> I ended up getting that for 400 pound. As I say, with the 17 to 70 Sigma, the 50 mil Sigma, and it actually came with, um, I'll put the lighting kit that it came with up in the, the top corner, top left hand corner or wherever I know, because I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but when I researched it, it was quite a professional level lighting kit, even though it was an old one, that also was in brand new condition, more or less. Um, it came with a backdrop, filters, I think the lay filters as well, a 10 stop ND filter for 400 pound. So that was pretty crazy to be honest. So I sold the lighting kit because it was a studio kit. I didn't need it. And I sold it for 420 pound. So I was 20 pound up and I had all this gear left over. And more or less brand new camera and a few brand new lenses. Um, and I, I really like using the K5 because it brings you right back to sort of like it's not got all the bells and whistles of the newer cameras, even though it has got a few nice uh, features on it, and it's built like a tank. I like using that um, for product shots with this 17 to 70 on, um, and I'm going to have a go at filming with that lens at 17 mil to see how it um, how it goes. But um, the 16 megapixel sensor on this camera, I'm really surprised at the image quality on it. Um, I'll put some shots up now of the, some of these pictures that I've took indoors. And this was just as I was getting started last year before the coronavirus hit with some indoor shoots. Um, I just started to fathom that stuff out. Um, but this, this setup, what you can see here, the K5 and Sigma 17 to 70, worked a treat for that type of stuff. Um, so going forward, I don't think I'll be selling this camera either. I think that'll be staying in the collection. I mean, it's free basically, isn't it? From the, what I did when I sold the lighting kit and stuff. So that's that. Now we're on to some of the lenses that we have here. So this one, I think this is probably the most recent lens I bought. This is the um, Pentax DA Star 200. Um, again, I got this second hand from eBay. Look at the front element on that. It's a beast, isn't it? This is built like a tank, metal construction. Um, you know, this, this could probably do someone quite a bit of damage if they were able to get on the wrong side of you when you're out and about. <laughs> they wish they hadn't messed with you if you had this on you. But um, yeah, I got that lens for bringing, sub I wanted it for portraits basically. Um, 
dog portraits, animal portraits and stuff like that. So I could uh, bring the background, like more, like compress everything basically. I wanted to see if, um, if it could, how, how well it could do that type of stuff. Um, I haven't really took many shots with this lens. Um, I'll put a few of them up now, what I've took. Um, 320 pound I got that for second hand. So that was a real bargain. It's, this, again, like all of the gear that I've managed to get so far, it's basically like brand new. Like, it's crazy. So, I think I could easily get my money back on this lens if I ever wanted to get rid of it. But I'd, I need to use it a bit more. I'll probably make a video on using this lens. Um, and all of the lenses, to be honest. And just show you like the type of stuff that they can produce with different bodies. I think that'd be quite interesting that. See how they um, perform on different, on the different bodies that I've got. Just a kit lens, the 50 to 200. Again, second hand. From uh, good old eBay. I think I got this for 40 pound and it didn't come with a lens hood or a end cap. Um, need a little bit of clean. But I've done all that, obviously you can see it's it's come up really nice. It's in decent condition. And that's, um, I, I, I just like trying different lenses. Um, and for £40 again, I'll probably, there's no point in selling it. It's just nice to have like the weather resistant thing if you want to go out for a quick walk about with that type of lens. So that's that one. Um, the 1835, 18 to 135, sorry. This is the second version of this I've got. Um, I sold the original version that I had so that I could buy the, the uh, Star 50 to 135. Um, but I ended up getting this again um, because it's a great walk around lens where the 50 to 135, that is a good walk around lens also. It's a lot heavier and it hasn't got the wide angle on it. Plus, this is a lot faster to focus. It's quite a quick focus, one of the quicker focusing lenses for Pentax this is. And obviously, you can see, they all in nice condition these, because I do take care of them. Even though, you know, they fall rugged outdoor use and all the rest of it, like Pentax. There's only a few of them that I actually use at, um, like the, motocross tracks and dirt bike tracks, which hopefully I'll also have videos coming up for you soon when they open behind the scenes. Um, we've got here the 18-55 kit lens. I think this was the first lens that I bought after I originally bought the K70 that came with the DA50 1.8. I got this one just so that I could have the wide angle um, lens a wider. Um, this one, it's in okay condition for what it is. It doesn't have, I'm not sure, do these, did these ever come with the REM lens hood originally? I'm not so sure, because I got another, eight, as I said, I got another 18 of 55 with the K3 that I bought. Um, I'm not sure that any, there's any point, it's just the same lens. But um, that's actually, I've took some all right shots with that um, back in, when I first got the camera, the K70. Um, it's just a nice lens to have, I suppose. It sort of conflicts a little bit with that 8 to 135 though, doesn't it? It's more or less the same size, isn't it, for a size comparison. That's them two there together. The 8 to 135 weighs quite a bit more, but I mean, they're not, Neither of them are heavy lenses, so. But, I mean, how much would you get for this if you sold it? Probably there's nothing, so. That'll be still here for now. And here's the DA50, Nifty 50 1.8 that I got with the uh, K70 originally. Came in a sort of package deal. That's got a rare filter on there, but 
it's hard to ever use this. I mean, it does it. It make makes some nice images. Like I'll put a few of the ones that I have took on there. But um, yeah, it's never. I, I don't really use it to be honest. So it's like a wait. It is a brand new lens, that. So that's the 50 mil Pentax version, anyway. Here's the Sigma 50 mil 1.4. This is a beast. Another uh, <laughs> look at that front element on that. It's massive. More or less brand new condition. It's got quite a bit of weight in this. Um, and I, again, I need to actually start to use these lenses because they just, um, someone else could be getting some decent pictures for them, I suppose. But I'm sort of hoarding all these, <laughs> these lenses. But I will be using them. I'll uh, make some videos on um, getting out with them. What have we got next? We've got the Sigma 10 to 20. I originally, when I bought this, I wanted it for some like cool wide angle shots of the dogs. Um, I'll put one of the couple of the pictures that I've took with this. Again, I don't use it as much as what I should. And originally, when I bought it, I bought this version and I bought the this is the HSM version, and I also bought the DC version, the F4, not the F3.5. Uh, this is the F3.5 HSM. I bought them both at the same time to see which one was the better lens because when I'd asked on the Pentax Facebook group I was getting a lot of different answers so I just seen a good deal on the, the DC version after I bought this and I thought why not I can always uh, get rid of it and I did. This to me is the better lens, um, it's quiet focusing um, and I just like the images better. Obviously. You can get different, uh, you can get better or worse copies, but this is a nice one for me. Again, more or less in brand new condition. I think I paid £220 for that lens. And this ain't the hold the value. Not that it's a thing about how much you, you can get back for your lenses and stuff, but it's just, you know, it's nice to know that you, you're not, you've not paid over the odds and stuff, so. All of this is paid for itself anyway, so it's not a problem. Um, Here's a Tamron um, 70 to 300, and this is what I start. I've got a load of pictures and um, what I used to do with the motocross tracks. Not with this exact lens, not with this version, but an old version that was just the LD version. Um, and this one is the LD DI or something like that. It's got some of the cortons on it, probably. It's got a filter on the front of there, so it's not purple usually. But um, these are really cheap telephoto lenses and are really good to see if you want that focal length, uh, the longer reach, rather than going out and buying a PLM or even the DA300, DA Star 300. You know, it's saving you quite a bit of money just testing the waters at that focal length to see if you actually like shooting at that and if you need it. Um, He's an old, we're onto the vintage glass now. He's an old uh, SMC 70 to 210. This one's got a tiny bit of fungus. I don't know if you can see it on there. Uh, you can see it there. It's got a little bit of fungus, but it never, it never shows up on the images. I'll put a few shots up of what I've took with this. And I actually, I really like this lens actually. It's got a macro function on it as well. What was it, like 25 quid off eBay? That's, that'll be staying with us. I've actually, I don't know if it's helped, but I, I left um, this lens out on the windowsill in the sun all day. So the sun was coming through onto the fungus. And I, don't, I have no idea whether that'll do anything, like help it out, stop it from getting any worse, but who knows. But it hasn't got any worse, and I've had it for like three years, round about now, two or three years. Um, this is uh, an old SMC Pentax M. It's 
in really nice condition. It's the, uh, obviously, if it being the M, it's the, it's not the air version. So you can't do catch and focus with it. But this is, this is a lovely lens for like bokeh and all that type of stuff. And that's, this is the lens that I used in my last video why I bought Pentax. This is the lens that I used on the K3 to uh, film that. With it having the manual, it's so smooth, the manual um, focus. You can get some, that it's really good for video, I think. And I might, um, I might get a few more manual lenses, maybe some wider ones like a, a, a 28. SMC 28 mil. I think that'll be a nice lens to try. Filming and stuff like that. And now, for whatever reason, I've ended up with three <laughs> vintage um, one, uh, 135s. And I suppose it's because I like a bargain. So, seven pound, I think that was nine pound. I think this one was £30. This was the first one I got. This is the um, Auto Chanon. Auto Chanon. Don't know how to pronounce that. I've been pretty lucky with the lenses I've bought because they, they're all in like pristine condition and I've kept them that way. They've got the uh, it's a nice little lens hood. I just like um, the feel of these. Are, they're really nice. Um, obviously, there's no point in selling them for the, the price that I paid. Um, and they're just nice to use for a nice walk out, something different. Obviously, I wouldn't use them on a paid job or anything like that, but it's just nice to have and try different uh, lenses, especially the older ones. It's cheap enough to do, you know, you can do it, it's no problem. Another, um, it's got the metal lens cap inbuilt on it. They all really um, sturdy build quality, these. This one, Super Paragon. Again, it's in pristine condition. Um, and when I've tested them against each other, them before, like ages ago, it wasn't really a green scientific test. Uh, the Auto Chanon seem to do the best. They've all got chromatic abbreviation. Abbreviation. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and this one, JC Penny, and this is quite interesting. This one, because I was originally looking for a Pentax A, a Pentax 135A, so that I could do catch and focus with it being the A. And funny enough, I found this JC Penny, and it is an A lens. But what I had to do was to take um, you have to do a little bit of modification on it if you look there see that hole I actually took out a pin um, because I was told that the uh, pin it was never made for Pentax um, K mount. It was made for another mount, basically. Um, all it, obviously, it fits the K mount. I'm a bit mixed up on that, to be honest. I'll have to go back over me uh, the notes that I made on it um, when I actually did the the pin removal. But um, yeah, that's uh, a nice lens as well, just to run about with a little knockabout lens. But basically, that's the collection. So I know it's been a long one. Um, like, share and subscribe and uh, what can I add to the collection? <laughs> Give us your thoughts, what's your favourite lenses? Um, which are your keepers? Lenses you never ever sell and which are the ones that you've tried and not so keen on? And which is your favourite lens out of the ones that I have? So yeah, that's me and I'll see you in the next video. I'm out. <laughs>